coming up. But first... <laughs> oh no! My monster has come back for me! <laughs> oh, you just want to play Dragon City! <laughs> and why wouldn't he? With our sponsor, Dragon City, you can collect, hatch, and evolve over 1,000 unique dragons. And you don't need to live and run down old ruins. <laughs> you can build your own dream city with magical habitats and buildings. Plus, embark on adventures filled with enchanting quests, ancient legends, and mythical creatures. <laughs> Prove your strength and engage in epic PvP battles with other Dragon Masters, and conquer challenging quests and events like the Wizard's Hollow using powerful Dragon skills and strategies. Click the link in our description or scan the QR code and receive a special bundle with 15,000 food, 30,000 gold, and the very rare Neo Azumi Dragon to get you started. With scavenged parts, Dr. Frankenstein is ready to bring life to his creation. But just how has Universal's Frankenstein monster evolved and been revived? Let's dig in now. Animated! In the first film, Frankenstein's monster wears lifted boots and a padded suit with shortened sleeves and a tiny lapel. He has a prominent scar on a square-shaped head and a metal clasp covered by slick black hair. He's gaunt with droopy eyelids, heavy eye bags, dark lips, and he has his signature neck bolts. Plus, in his dome, he's housing a deranged brain. This cobbled corpse accidentally runs amok, resulting in an angry mob burning him down. Although the sequel shows he survived, he's battle damaged and his singed hair reveals more metal clasps. The dark blemishes around his eyes are gone, his scar is reshaped, and he's less gaunt. He's also taught how to speak by a blind hermit. Good. Good. Later, the monster insists on having a bride. This creation looks suspiciously like the novel's author, Mary Shelley. She sports a white dress and mummy wrappings while her upright hairdo has added streaks. After this new creation rejects the monster, he chooses to self-destruct them both. The third film reveals the monster sleeping in a coma, although he's awoken by the son of Frankenstein and Igor. He's no longer crispy, his shoes are simplified, and he's rocking a fuzzy vest with a loose sleeve shirt. His forehead scar is longer while his bangs are trimmed, and he's lost all power of speech. Interestingly, color footage of this outfit was shot. Igor manipulates Frankenstein's monster to eliminate his enemies, although the monster is stopped when he's knocked into molten sulfur. In the fourth film, the monster is taller, lacks the fuzzy coat ensemble, and his sleeves and lapel are longer. His head is more square with rounded features, added moles, and a wider scar. In this film, Igor scavenges the monster from hardened sulfur, and later has his own brain transplanted into the monster giving him unlimited power. Yes, I will take over the world! <laughs> but he loses his sight, then clumsily perishes in a fire. The monster in the follow-up is somehow found frozen and then quickly released. He's more rotund with a circular head, less droopy eyes, and has one less mole, although he occasionally looks young and chiseled. There's also no mention of the Igor brain swap. The monster is given a power upgrade and faces a furry foe, but they both get washed away. The sequel finds the monster frozen again. He's gained height, has a longer head, droopier eyes, and an extended scar. Once more, he powers up, only to drown in quicksand. In the continuation, after his mud bath, he's given another jump start, but is taken down by reused footage. In the Abbott and Costello crossover, his master Dracula unboxes him. This monster's forehead scar is more realistic, the clamp's more protruding, his neck bolts and mole are higher, and he has lengthier sideburns. Oh, and he can talk! Again! Hello, master. Although, when chasing two dim-witted fools, he fumbles into a fire and falls in a lake. Frankenstein the True Stories creation looks beautiful and dresses in fitted fineries, but he mostly wears a brown jacket, beige pants, and tall boots. Notably, this creation slowly starts decaying. Our Adam is also given an Eve, who wears elegant dresses to hide her neck scars. But the monster loses interest in her pretty swiftly. In the end, creation and creator are given peace in an avalanche. In Monster Force, a 
beefy Frank has purpley skin, shaved sides, and yellow eye whites. He dons a green overcoat and a yellow tee paired with brown pants. This monster can shoot lasers, while his bride has added neck bolts, wears a pink and black ensemble, and still isn't fond of Frank. The monster in the miniseries House of Frankenstein is found frozen and mostly looks like a decaying dad with an added hunch and is outfitted in a fresh blue shirt and black shoes. This ghoul is, for some reason, sought by a mean old bat. The Chipmunks crossover monster wears a green jacket, dark brown pants, thick platform shoes, and has sharp canine teeth. This creature eventually becomes a bus driver and is taught how to speak by his chipmunk friends. Is everyone on board? Ben Helsing's reboot monster has pale lavender colored skin with added mechanical parts, electric domes, and he wears a ragged duster. Also, his brain cap can pop off and he has an electrical blast. Dracula intends to use this monster's life force to birth his offspring, but Van Helsing has other plans. And with countless other appearances, let us know if you want to see more animations of Frankenstein's monster. Don't forget to check out Dragon City in the description, or with our QR code to get a ton of free items and become a Dragon Master. You don't mind if I play a little bit? Arr! Okay, monster, it's your game now. The next animation will be a kaiju, and you get to vote! Simply comment below if you'd like to see King Ghidorah, Rodan, Mechagodzilla, or Mothra. Then hit like, click subscribe, and tap that little bell.